Hello and welcome back to RiseWorks. This is episode 5 of getting started with attributes and wops inside of Houdini. And this particular video will be talking about how we can move the points, but actually constrain the movement just to one axis. Uh, so in our case, um, we'll not just learn how to divide the uh, vector into floats and get floats back into vectors again, but uh, in a more kind of practical setup, we will see how to uh, create, uh, maybe help you in a procedural way of creating cable networks, for example, uh, so you don't have to offset manually things. If you have like a cable network, it will be uh, really time consuming just to take all the points and move them around by hand. This is like nuts. Uh, fantastic or in a more sort of like a dramatic effect I suppose we could uh, have something like generator of uh, of the lightning arc setups uh, that kind of moves like this and as you can see it does indeed move just in uh, one axis in our case x-axis and uh, so without further ado let's learn how to you know convert uh, WAP setups into pretty much anything else. So as per usual, I will delete everything. So we start from the very beginning. Uh, the only thing I actually have is the camera and environment lights, but it's kind of like the default setup, nothing interesting here. And of course uh, we have the background dark. And I invoked this pop-up menu by just pressing the D key uh, while hovering over the viewport anyway. So let's create our line. Uh, I will enable the show, showing of our points and the points will be like, I don't know, let's say 20. And as per usual, let's drop the attribute WAP and run it over points. And, you know, by default, it runs over points. Uh, just to make it a bit more visual, I think uh, we will immediately after that have a poly wire so we can actually uh, see a little bit better what's happening when we need to. So uh, what happens is the line gets converted to kind of like a, a tube that follows the topology of the line. And we will change the topology, and not actually the topology, but the uh, position on the points of the line that generating the tube. So let's get started. Uh, as per usual, we connect point to point and nothing happens obviously because we do not do anything with it. But we will begin right now. So I will add a noise. In this case, any noise will do, let's say anti-alias noise. And we'll do the basic addition. So do not forget to uh, connect the position of the P to position of the noise, otherwise it will not work, as you can see. Now we have something. Uh, we add the actual position that we had of our, let's actually just invoke uh, the view of our attribute pop. So we have our initial position of our points, the 20 of those, and we add the noise position and the result will be something like this. But <clears throat> immediately you can see that, uh, maybe I'll change the roughness a little bit so we can see what's happening immediately. You can see that uh, if we change the 3D input to 3D noise, it actually moves around in many, many, many ways, not just one axis, but many axes, axis or whatever it's called. Uh, now, what if we wanted to constrain the movements um, and actual like mo movements of our points with the noise, but let's say it will move just in X axis, right? It will not, uh, not move it in Z or Y or whatnot. We, um, we know that position is um, it's a vector, as it says, like P, three floats, uh, three float is a vector. And this noise is a 3D input 3D noise, which again is vector. But one, like if, you want, if we want it to move only on one axis, we have to move it as a float on that axis and leave other um, parts of our position alone. Like we don't need to move the Y and Z, but we only need to move the X. How to do that? Now we have to convert the vector to floats. Let's do just that. Um, vector to floats. Uh, if we not just, you know, type a lot of words like vector to float, um, VTF, 
uh, will do just fine, right? So we press the enter, and as you can see, it needs the input of a vector. And in our case, it's the position. And as you can see, it has float value 1, 2, 3. In our case, it's x, y, and z. Okay, so we create another add just to, you know, be safe. Again, uh, noise, we will divide our noise into vector to float as well. And we will add the value x of the initial line, points, position, and the noise values of the x. So we now have the sum of both the FL1 from our initial and from our noise. I hope that's clear. Now we need to have a vector back in our geometry output of our VOP. So we have to kind of find a way to connect things back together, all the three floats, into um, you know, one vector. And it's done. Float to vector. And there you go. So, as we remember, our resulting x will be the sum of our addition, and we get it to float to vector. Whoops, my bad. Here. Okay. Um, I will delete this because this gets in our way, and I will hold down the Y key because it, again, gets in our way. However, since we previously divided our vector into three floats, we can just connect the y to y and z to z. And the result, as you can see, will be just moving our points only in x-axis. As you can see, everything, is, everything else is kind of like perfectly untouched, right? So uh, to control that effect, obviously I'll click uh, middle mouse button a number of times just to promote these parameters. Whoops. Okay. And now we have a little interface just to, you know, control the roughness, control... Uh, uh, actually, I forgot. Where is the amplitude though? <laughs> I don't think I see the... Well, this is weird. I don't see the amplitude. R really strange. Promote, constant, promote, maybe it kind of like bugged out. Yep, it was a little bug. <laughs> um, yep, so there we go. We can now control the position of our points and it, obviously if we uh, con convert that to polywire, we can, you know, move things around and it will behave as we want it. Now, if I read the offset, like $t divided by nine as per usual, maybe 10, 15, at this point, it actually doesn't really matter. And if we play this around, you can see that uh, this does really look kind of like uh, the sparks that, you know, are created between two electrified elements. Uh, what I really want to do now is actually uh, make this attribute VOP run only um, on points that are not first three and last three points. So how do we do that? Uh, group by range. Uh, we discussed that in the introductory course to Houdini, if I'm not mistaken. It was uh, lesson three or four, something like this. Uh, you should check that out. Uh, anyway, so group by range, right? Uh, we select the points and we start from points, let's say three, and and three points in before. So as you can see, the orange points that go from up to down, they we do not touch the last three and the first three. So what that, does it uh, mean for us? If we group selection by group one, it means that we do not touch the first three points, as you can see in the last three points. So that's useful. Uh, what it means for our little thing is that um, our initial stages are not being affected because we run attribute VOP only on this group select. Obviously, you can, you know, left tweak this. If you want it constrained even more, you can do it like this. And um, as a little tip, uh, how to procedurally kind of like uh, model cables so they look smooth and whatnot. So first we convert Okay, this works. Uh, we convert uh, from anything to, uh, let's say, NURPS curve, so it kind of becomes smooth, right, as you can see. 
Uh, and then we resample it back to actually being polygons. And uh, we decide how many divisions we have by using a maximum segment length because it works for us. You know, if I enable the visualization of the points, you can see that we can basically uh, tweak the resolution of the resulting thing and the poly wire uh, will indeed uh, be like this cable network. And of course, um, it still like works on our animation, but this being the cable, uh, you don't want to have this amount of roughness, first of all, and amplitude to be a little bit more. And maybe group by range, we like from two to two. Uh, so there you go. The, this is kind of like the easiest setup of um, modeling offsetting cables. Um, and of course, uh, using the vector to float and float to vector inside of our attribute VOPs, this will be uh, useful for further lessons. So play with it, please. Uh, take like uh, takes a little bit of time to understand how this works because maybe it's a bit more of an abstract thing, right? So converting vector to float and back again, like you know, I, maybe it takes a little bit of time to understand. So take your time. Um, don't be afraid if you don't get it from the first five minutes, right? Like six, six minutes, you'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, this was a little bit more abstract, more a little bit. Uh, no, actually, it was kind of practical because we created a system that for uh, helps us to kind of um, procedurally model cables and maybe even create sparks and uh, and things like that. So hopefully you learned uh, things, uh, more things about VOPs. There is. Uh, more to come about VOPs. Um, and uh, yeah, if you like what you see, press the like button. If you have questions, suggestions, don't forget to leave the comments uh, in the comment section. And if you don't want to miss anything else, just hit the subscribe button. Uh, we will talk more about pretty much anything 3D going forward. So hopefully I'll see you in the next videos. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good day and goodbye.